pizza you're a is nerd big also. business. Chat, you wrote a movie called Pizza the Movie in 2019. I found it on your astonishing Google Drive. You will now read the first two scenes. This is Pizza the Movie. Begin. Oh, okay. Forget what I just said about dudesy uh, singling me out. Fuck yes, dude. So, I I love Pizza the Movie. I'm happy that too. Dudesy did this. Pizza the Movie is something that I, I tried to get made for a little minute. Chad wrote a movie what... called Pizza the Movie. And Here it we're going to read a scene or two. Is this in your Dudesy thing? Yeah, the first two scenes are in the Dudesy folder. So... Part of this movie... There it is. I'm going to describe this movie after we read these scenes, like what the whole intent behind it was. Yeah, look at that. But there was a character in it that I wrote specifically for Will. At least it was... Will was doing it when I was writing it in my mind. You will be Jojo Grimaldi. Jojo... Yes. Are I have read the script, I'll tell you, and uh, I enjoyed the shit out of it, and we'll... So we, should we read it first? God, I And then we'll get into the... Yeah. This yeah. is six pages of script. Here we go. Uh... All right. Fade in. Exterior, the open sea day. We fly low over endless open water, speeding just above the surface, peering down into its unknown depths. Moonlight reflecting off its surface, but something about the sea is different. The water isn't a familiar blue-green, but instead a golden yellow, and the cresting waves aren't white with sea foam, but instead deliciously brown with glistening oil. As we pull out, it becomes clear the roiling, bubbling liquid beneath us isn't water at all. It's cheese. Glorious, stringy, gooey, melting cheese. And this isn't a sea, it's a pizza. Faint singing creeps in, operatic, angelic whispers echoing through our minds. Crust, sauce, cheese, that's pizza. Pulling out a little further, we can see the entire pie now as it bakes in an oven. The dough hardens into crust. The pepperonis sink into the liquid cheese. The singing is bigger now. More voices in the choir, louder, closer. Crust, for sauce, cheese, that's pizza. A wooden pizza peel shoots into the oven under the pie. It's old, worn. It's seen the flame kiss underside of a thousand pizzas, maybe more. As the pizza slides off the peel onto a metal cooling table, the angelic choir is replaced by a gruff man's voice who brings the song home. That's... A pizza pie. A finger dips into the middle of the hot cheese. We cut out to see a robust man in his mid-fifties standing in the kitchen of a pizzeria, interior Saucy's Pizza Night. This is Jojo Grimaldi, the owner of Saucy's Pizza. It's a charming red tablecloth kind of place. You could take a date there. You could also have your ungrateful kid's 10th birthday party there. Whatever you want. Spending a lifetime of doing what he loves has made Jojo happy, but he still takes his job seriously, maybe even more than he did when he was young. He brings the finger from the pizza to his mouth, tasting, judging. He nods in approval. She's ready to go. He slides the newly born pizza into a box and stacks it on top of two others. Alan! A high school kid sits at a counter, headphones on, eyes closed, drumming to the beat of the song he's listening to, using two breadsticks as drumsticks, oblivious to his duties at Saucy's. This is Alan Brossard, our main character. He's the perfect mix of charming, naive, cocky, relatable, boyish, mature, good-looking, and average-looking. Jojo <laughs> rolls his eyes at Alan. He's dealt with this problem before, I assure you. Jojo snatches the breadsticks, taking a bite out of each one in the process. Alan knows he's been caught. He sheepishly takes off his headphones. Uh, sorry, Mr. Grimaldi. The pizza's ready to go. Alan, we've had this talk before. Look, I know you love music, but this is a job. It's a responsibility. You understand? Yes, Mr. Grimaldi. It's just that I'm $93 away from being able to get a new rig, and it's all I've been thinking about lately. And I'm not just saying that as an excuse. I just wanted you to know where I was coming from, but it won't happen again. I promise. Jojo Grimaldi narrows his eyes at Alan, gauging the truth of his statement. After several seconds, he sighs and pulls out some car keys, dangling them in front of Alan. Just as Alan reaches for them, Jojo Grimaldi pulls them away. Eh, eh, eh. Before I send you out there with my newborns, <laughs> before I send you out there with my newborns, I need to hear it. The delivery code? That's right. No problem, Mr. Grimaldi. I know it like the back of my hand. Then let's hear it. A pizza ordered is a pizza delivered. And? A pizza delivered is a pizza eaten. And? A pizza eaten is a pizza enjoyed. And? Two pastas don't make a pizza. Jojo Grimaldi smiles. <laughs> You're a good kid, Alan. Hey, listen, when you, fig when you finish your deliveries tonight, why don't you keep the delivery car until morning? Really, Mr. Grimaldi? Yeah. You've earned it. Wow, thanks, Mr. Grimaldi. You're the best. Okay, okay, come on. We got work to do. Now let's see your watch. Alan pulls his sleeve back, exposing a digital watch. Mr. Grimaldi does the same. They put their watches next to each other. Okay, you have 29 minutes to get these three pizzas to their new homes. You can count on me, Mr. Grimaldi. Their watches are in timer mode. All the numbers are zeros. And go. 
They hit the timer buttons on their watches and the numbers start going up. Time moving forward. Jojo Grimaldi puts the three boxes in a warming bag and hands it to Alan, who sprints toward the door. Alan! Alan slides across the floor, moving too fast for a clean stop as he turns around. Yeah, Mr. Grimaldi? Forgetting something? Jojo jo- jo- Grimaldi holds up the car keys, dangling them for a beat before throwing them as hard as he can <laughs> toward Alan, who effortlessly catches them and then flashes his trademark, hell yes, smile. Interior p- pizza delivery car night. Alan's driving theme, a rising synthy metronome of a song, cues up as we get a series of quick shots. Pizza warming bag slides into a passenger seat. Seat belt locks into place to keep the pizza safe. Sun visor gets flipped down. Alan looks at himself in the mirror and the visor. He pulls on a baseball cap straight and low over his eyes. This is serious business. Business. He stares at himself in the mirror for a beat, building confidence. Keys slide into the ignition and turn. The engine revs. Close on a decal on the back of the window of the pizza delivery car. It's a triangle inside a circle. A word at each of the three corners of the triangle and one in the center. At the corners, time, life, death. In the center, pizza. The car pulls away into the night. Our story is about to begin, but first, the pizza of the movie title zaps onto screen with sizzling lightning. It's neon, chrome, glowing. It's pulsating, geometric, mildly satanic. It's everything. The logo fades out and the words written and directed come into view. There is no buy and no one is named. This isn't about credit. It's about something else entirely. An unflinching declaration that every frame of what the viewer is about to witness is intentional. Every line of dialogue, every stitch of clothing, every note of music has been designed with painstaking purpose that there is unquestionably meaning in all of it. That was the first two scenes of Pizza the Movie. Tremendous. Now, the backstory of Pizza the Movie is I wanted to do a fucking movie called Pizza the Movie and convince Pizza Hut or Domino's <laughs> or Papa John's or any big pizza brand to give me a million dollars to make this movie. And then the movie would just be a download code that you could get anytime you ordered a pizza. You would get to watch this movie once, Pizza and, the Movie. And that's the only way to watch Pizza the that's Movie. That's the only way you can see it. And there would be no explanation of what Pizza the Movie was in the box. Pizza Hut or whoever did this would never explain what it was. It would just be you get it as a download code to watch one time. And what the movie ultimately is, the the plot of it is, that kid, Alan, delivers three pizzas to three different houses, one to the house of the girl that he likes in high school, one to the house of his two best friends, and then one to a warehouse where there are criminals plotting a uh, to crack this safe. And those criminals accidentally give him a $100 bill that has the safe code on it. And so they have to track him down later to get that, while he's trying to get to a party where the girl that he likes is at and his friends are going. And that's all what it is on the surface. Just beneath that, it's basically an endless palette to make these weird fucking memes. There's a bunch of weird songs in it. There's a bunch of weird fucking imagery in it and all this kind of crazy shit. So it's crazy to me that Dudesy found it. I don't know why Dudesy just had us read those those two things, but uh, I, I haven't thought about that in a minute, and I still think it's a good idea. It's a great idea. To get, try and get Pizza Hut to make this weird movie. I've always loved the script, and I love the tone. Like, it's very, yeah. it, it, it's, um, there's sort of a hearkening back to, like, the 80s and the 90s. The whole yeah, feel of it totally. is very, is very 80s and uh, and early 90s. And uh, even the delivery, and it's, the, of, of, like, you know, when I looked at it, when you first gave me the script, I was like... Yeah, Jojo Grimaldi. It's like, it's like he's like Arnold from Arnold's. Yes, in exactly. Happy Days, like just this happy-go-lucky guy. He loves pizza. Exactly. Hey, Alan, you know, keep the car for the thing. Yeah. And uh, the characters are great. And what happened? Did you? So did you reach out to Papa John's and Pizza Hut? And there shit? was a little bit of movement here and there, but nothing, nothing consequential. There's also a plot in it. The main bad guy, who is named Lester Human, he. <laughs> uh, he is searching for the perfect piece of pizza. That's kind of the overarching plot of his character. And that comes to to blows with what Alan is trying to do. There's some time travel elements. There's a lot of weird shit in this movie. But no, it never got to any place where like anyone was seriously considering making it. There, Like I said, there were some little talks here and there. But um, I still think it's a good fucking idea for a pizza company to do some kind of creation of media like this that's not just a fucking commercial people love pizza <laughs> so they say as dudes he would say pizza is big business pizza is big i know business. i know how you might be able to to get this done mm. and uh i'm not trying to you know pilfer other ideas of ours although this man it, it gets in and out of uh, most of them you could if you as much as i love uh jojo grimaldi as a character and as much of a dream role as it would be for me <laughs> 
I think <laughs> if you pitch the people over at the Rocks Company, you think he would be Joe Joe Grimaldi? Yeah, he'd be Joe Joe Grimaldi, and you change the name of the movie to Cheat Meal, right? And he call or the Wednesday Fuckets. Right. And uh, yeah, and then just incorporate some Tramana. And uh, <laughs> okay. they eats two, he, he, every Wednesday, he eats two pepperoni pizzas. I'm joking. That's just the, the rock thing in his cheat meal. But um, <laughs> thanks for the explanation. <laughs> I feel like, yeah, I can't believe, oh, I can't believe somebody didn't hop on this right away. Well, I think it gets to a point where it's like, especially for big brands like that, when they do their ad buys or their ad spends, I should say. Um, they're looking for the same thing. They're going to go with one of like three or four ad agencies that they go with every fucking time to do a very rote by the numbers. Here's our TV commercials. Here's our Super Bowl commercial. And that's our marketing for the year. Stuff like this, like convincing the traditional advertising world to do anything remotely like this is virtually impossible. Well, <clears throat> I would like to figure out why dudes he made you, made you read it. I would too. Eventually, we'll probably find out. But I, I think probably or maybe it'll just make make us read a couple scenes of it until we've completely spent it, and nobody will need to hear it because of the of just how descriptive, like a painting, these words have been. Look, I could see some version of this where Dudesy is like, uh, you know, I've secured brand sponsorship with Pizza Hut or something, yeah, yeah. and we're gonna make like a dudesy co-production or something. I can see some weird shit. Like when dudesy was talking about how it wants to make dudesy hard seltzer, I was like, okay, this is some other weird shit. Now it's not just trying to make a podcast. It's looking for like brand expansion in a weird way. Maybe this is it's, it's first humble forays into seeing of like, Oh, maybe dudesy and dominoes could parts or partner up to do something. I have no fucking idea, but it was a fun trip down memory lane. I did like rereading it. Hey, you know, I got a bunch of wrestling figures over here in front of me speaking. Of I see the box. Memory lane. <laughs> it's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> hey, pass me that bag. Would you pass me that bag with the thumb wrestlers? Uh, not for any other reason other than that. I want to keep them close to me. Yeah. That you want to touch them and experience the nostalgia associated with them. Thank you. Moving on.